Hey dancers, welcome back to our channel. I'm Julie and I'm the owner and one of the instructors here at Broche Ballet, a ballet school just for adults in Denver, Colorado. I am here today with the wonderful Kirsten Kemp from Twin Talk Ballet. She is a former professional dancer and now is a mindset coach to help you through all of those struggles along your ballet journey. Yes. So welcome to the channel. Thank you, Julie. I really appreciate you reaching out to me and I'm very inspired by what you do in providing a space specifically for adult dancers to, you know, work out their passion and to get individualized attention. I think that's really amazing. And you're definitely serving kind of an underserved community in the ballet world. So thanks for what you do. Awesome. Well, it's so fun to chat today. Um, we have a handful of questions from our dancers that we get both inside the studio and outside of the studio online. And since you are all about mindset, we would love to get your thoughts as we all go on this long and fabulous and sometimes frustrating journey that we call ballet training. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So um, let's talk about how uh, ballet is a pretty long game, right? It's, it takes yeah. a long time no matter who you are. Um, where you are in your journey, whether you started as a kid or as an adult, it takes a long time to get your body to do the things that we want it to do. So how do we, um, how do we uh, keep healthy habits through a, along this path? How do we really create consistency in our lives in order to reach these goals along this very long, yeah. long time? Totally. Yeah, I think one of the amazing things about ballet is that it is really something that reminds us that slow and gradual work um, and delight in the little successes, that's really important. And I think those are the building blocks of living a life with contentment and joy, as opposed to pursuing a life of, um, you know, just instant gratification to keep you along this, this rabbit trail of happiness, you know, chasing happiness. I think ballet is a great reminder and a practice to slow down and to enjoy the process because as many dancers learn the hard way, you can't not do that and stay in ballet. Like if you cannot learn to be content along the journey, you'll burn out. You know, we can't just live for the stage if that's going to happen like once a year, if we're lucky, especially as adult dancers, which I'm sure you give your, your dancers plenty of opportunity um, to, you know, perform work. I'm not sure, but um, my advice would really be to find contentment in what, whatever way you can um, as you as you practice just every day or a couple of times a week. And one of the ways I like to do this is I'm very careful about my language and the emotions that I associate to the activities I need to do in order to achieve my goals. So, so often a lot of dancers get kind of trapped in, in waiting for the achievement of a far off goal to make them happy. And so until they finally get that contract or they finally get their double or triple pirouette, whatever it is, they feel miserable, they feel frustrated, and they just want to be there already. And of course, that's when contentment goes out the window. So my advice is to start to say, watch your language instead of saying, oh, I should have this by now, or oh man, I should stay later to practice my pirouettes. I think should is a really dangerous word that you need to use carefully because it's a word that brings a lot of obligation and it makes it, whatever you're doing, feel like a chore. Um, and it kind of over time makes us want to avoid that activity that we need to do to achieve the thing we want to achieve. So my advice is to use words like I get to, I choose to. Choosing to is a really powerful um, you know, reminder for your brain to say like, oh, you know what? I choose to be here and I take ownership over my experience. So shifting your words to choose to, get to, I will, I can, things like that, that instantly changes the connotation of the practice. Um, and that also can inform um, the mental pictures that come up when you think about going to ballet class. If over time you feel obligated to do it, to get better, you might start to feel like it's a chore and then you think of ballet class and the emotion that comes up is like uh, dread or like I don't know whatever it is so create a new positive association to the practice um, starting by watching your words and it seems so simple but I think simple can be really impactful and it's the best way for us to start to take action a lot of these secrets like they're not secrets at all they're they're not like big fancy techniques it's just simple stuff watch watch what you're telling yourself honestly 
yeah, I mean, as dancers, we always want more. I mean, as humans too, we always want more. We're sort of made to want more. We're never satisfied yeah. with where we are. And so if we're always chasing something further than where we are, once we get there, we just see what's next. Once you get two gear, what's yes. three? Once you get three, you want four. Yeah. There's always a taste for more, which is the mm -hmm. exciting part of ballet, but also can be challenging, as you said, if you find oh, yeah. that you were hoping that by the time you reach this goal, you would then be happy. Or once you got this experience, then you'd be happy. If you're waiting for that yeah. moment, honestly, that moment will come and pass. And then the next thing will be ahead of you. Exactly, exactly. And it's funny, you mentioned, um, or I hear the term better a lot or more. Like, oh, I just want to be better at this. I want to do more of this. And that's why I usually stop any of the clients I've had, any of the dancers I've worked with. I say, okay, but what is the next tangible goal that you want to achieve? What is that specifically? And how will you know once you've achieved it? Mm -hmm. Will your arabesque literally be at a certain degree? How will you want to feel in your body? And once you identify that feeling, you can know when you've actually reached that benchmark. So many dancers get stuck in this trap of, I need to be better, I need to do more, but what kind of picture does that bring up? I mean, for me, it's like this continual line going in this direction. There is no stopping point. And of course, as dancers, we're not going to stop and be complacent once we achieve something, but we do. We are still human beings and we do need rewards along the way as we progress. So challenging yourself to make more tangible goals and set um, intentions for yourself, daily, weekly, monthly intentions, it takes a little bit of time and effort, but really what you're doing is you're giving yourself the opportunity to feel rewarded when you actually achieve the simple, meaningful goal that you set out for yourself. I so think, yeah, that's another I think thing. What you said about knowing when you reached it is really important um, yeah. to be clear about because if you're dancing and you want to feel graceful, Honestly, yeah. the choreography is going to get harder and you're going to feel less graceful. So yeah. if you're graceful at a simple step and then you master that step and then you go on to a more complex step, you will no longer feel yeah. as graceful. So right. that if you're looking for a specific feeling, sometimes that can be very hard to set as a goal. Maybe you feel more graceful at one specific thing, but not just in general, or maybe that yeah. you're more confident trying new things or whatever right. it might be. But it, it's tricky when you want to feel a certain way because ballet is always growing with you and so as you grow mm -hmm. the challenges grow as well and so adopting a, a a mindset that enables you to approach those challenges can be better than wanting to feel a certain way at the end of it I completely agree with that because feelings totally come and go they fluctuate you can't rely on them and sometimes even though I am a big believer in like if if you have um in intuition is important and emotional intelligence is important. So our emotions and our feelings can provide us direction in our decision making. However, one trait of top performers is that they actually associate pleasure to the discomfort of growth. Mm -hmm. They associate pleasure to the process of putting themselves outside of their comfort zone so that their comfort zone can expand. And so the faster we start to use our language and watch the mental pictures that come up when um, we are setting our goals or saying, okay, I want to do this and this and this, um, the faster we learn to say, you know what, I choose to um, stand in the front today. I choose to um, see what happens when I go for a triple pirouette and take the pressure off to actually land it or make it perfect, but just like try it, you know, um, when you start to love that process of just saying like, you know, let's try, why not? Um, that's when you'll really start to then get the true pleasure of seeing what you can accomplish. So yeah, healings are deceptive, though they are an important part of our journey. For sure. Um, when, when you think about, um, you know, kind of taking some of those risks in class, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, there's so many reasons why you may not want to take them. I mean, not necessarily that they're good reasons or that you shouldn't push through them, but one big reason that I'll, you know, kind of hear or, or get the sense of is that people are worried what other people will think of them if they yeah. will mess up or fall over or forget the choreography or, you know, they have some old fear of getting answers wrong in school and feeling bad right. about that or like whatever they might fear about the teacher or the other dancers or someone else thinking about them. What, what do you think about that? 
process of being many things <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts on that open the box <laughs> so yes yes and I'll try to be concise um the first thing is that everyone is thinking about themselves everyone and at least what has worked for me personally as I've also certainly struggled with that is um I had a mentor really challenge me once and what I was saying to her is I was saying you know I'm just I'm just so afraid of being yelled at again because I had a teacher who, or many teachers who were very rough with me. And it really did make me want to hide because it's extraordinarily vulnerable to put yourself out there like that. Mm -hmm. um, but at one point, I had been talking to this woman that I respect so much. And she just goes, when I was saying, I'm just worried about what people would think, she says, What makes you think you're so important? And I was like, Oh, whoa. <laughs> And that's not how everyone is really coming off, or that's not the intention behind um, behind that concern for everyone. But it did really, I didn't take it personally. It, it did really challenge me to think, you know, maybe, and I do hold this philosophy that many um, insecurities like that, that hold you back from really doing what you can, they are sometimes self-centered or there's an issue with vulnerability there, or there could be, like you mentioned, some healing that needs to take place because a teacher said something to you when you put yourself out there, maybe raised your hand to answer a question, and they uh, said something that brought up feelings of, you know, um, maybe you wanted to shrink after that, you felt embarrassed or shame. Um, and so, yeah, we all have a healing journey to go on, and that's why it's important to work with somebody, a mindset coach, a therapist, a counselor, to really dissect what those vulnerabilities are for yourself and heal from them. Um, but the other encouragement I have for all dancers is that I know it's vulnerable to put your mistakes out there to be seen. But honestly, how will you ever show your full self and 100% of yourself if you're not willing to show the 10% that's the mistakes? Mm -hmm. You will completely hide the 90% that is beautiful, wonderful, inspiring, and it'll probably speak to someone else who's watching you. Maybe it'll make their day better. I always like to think of um, showing up as 100% of myself as, um, or doing 100% of what I can. I think of that in terms of the service I can provide when I'm not holding back because I'm scared because I don't want to feel uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. So I say participate 100%. Know that the the feelings of you know the of vulnerability will be there, um, but everyone has their mistakes to share. And the real shame is when you don't show your strengths as well because they're going to be mixed in there just like the mistakes will be too. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned, you know, we, uh, you know, mixing the mistakes in with the perfection. I mean, you think that your mistakes are in their own separate bucket and you can just mm -hmm. hide them and tuck them yeah. in the corner and sweep them under the rug yeah. and show the part of you that's really good. Yeah. Um, you know, I think in, in that way, it's, you know, you see, especially online, you see only the, the good videos, the good pictures, yeah. you know, and you think that you can filter your life and your person, your presence in person in the same way. But really, you're, you're, you're right about that, where you can't. If you don't stumble on your words a little bit, you'll never get the good ones out. Right, exactly. And you know what? I I really enjoy showcasing top performers um, whenever I can or their stories on my channel or sometimes in private conversations, I'll mention the perspective of some dancers I know that made it pretty big. And people look at them like, wow, they're really amazing. They, they must have just total confidence and happiness all the time. Um, actually, there was... Uh, one dancer I worked with who has a tremendous following on social media and she's not alone. I've talked to others that really have this, um, this name that precedes them and they feel so much pressure and concern each time they walk into a new room, a new audition, a new studio, they feel so much pressure to live up to this ideal that they've posted online yeah. and it's crippling and it's, it's kind of awful. And so, I mean, I'd say, especially, actually, whoever's watching, they can watch the recent interview I posted with Hannah Bettis on my YouTube channel. Um, she was a world famous dancer, actually. And she talked about how she was always worried that people were expecting, oh, Hannah Bettis, and she couldn't have a bad day, you know. Um, and then she was talking about how she actually longed for those days again when she was in the court of ballet, and she wished she enjoyed it more. 
because having your space to just be you and not to be a name or to be perfect, that's beautiful. You know, you have a lot more freedom there typically. So I, yeah, I like to kind of share both sides of a lot of us think that life would be better if we were perfect or more talented. But once you set that bar for yourself and people notice, you'll feel the pressure to live up to that bar. So enjoy what you have now and who you are now. That's awesome. I, I think that's really great to keep that perspective where you, you know, you really, you are you and whatever you are right now is great. That doesn't mean you can't yeah. want to improve on that and, yeah. you know, keep, keep learning and keep growing, but who you are now is still, is still pretty great. Totally. Yeah. So let's get into one last question here before I let you go on your day. Um, one uh, thing I know you work with a lot and that we work with a lot with our dancers is injuries. Yeah. So we don't always have dancers with dance specific injuries, but we have dancers with life injuries, an old yeah. car accident, nagging ankle sprains, you know, totally. rotator cuff injury. Uh, we do have people with dance injuries as well, but you know, you get these old long-standing injuries that can really start flaring up when you push your body to the max or, or new ones pop up. Yes. What, uh, you know, that can be pretty discouraging. You know, you can be frustrated with your body. It can be challenging to be out of the studio, especially mm-hmm. when ballet is how you relieve stress. So how, uh, what is your, what, what, do you, what are your thoughts on how you can stay motivated while you're injured and kind of get through that with a healthy mindset? Yeah. So first, uh, and, and I have a, quite a list of like things I would recommend because Great. it takes a lot to get through an injury recovery and especially to recover strong. It's one thing to be pain-free and it's another to be completely recovered mm-hmm. um, and strong again, or even stronger than you were before. Um, And I can completely empathize with this, having gone through a pretty complicated and arduous knee injury. Um, So the first thing is get in community. Um, Find at least one friend, even an internet friend. Like I found, I connected with other dancers just through Facebook or Instagram. And um, when I was injured and I found out they were going through something similar, And so we were just pen pals and just to have somebody to ask questions and to just vent to and support each other. Like that was a really big deal Um, because social isolation or feeling misunderstood can be a really um, underestimated challenge in the recovery process. Um, The other thing is this is difficult, but first identify what expectations you have for yourself and your body and even that injured part. And this is, this is hard, but challenge yourself to let go of those expectations so that instead of looking towards the future and thinking, I need to be back by this time, because that's what my doctor said. They said four to six weeks. So uh, four weeks, baby, you know, (laughs) Um, so many of us really become attached to getting through the process as quickly as we can because it's uncomfortable. That's totally understandable. But the thing is about life, like in life, there are seasons and sometimes we have to be patient and sometimes we have to learn to let go of needing to already be out on the other side in order to actually complete the healing process. So Mm -hmm. I found that for me, when I was injured, I was so stuck in this mindset of I'm a dancer, I'm a dancer, I'm a dancer, and a dancer's body has to feel like this, it has to do this, I need to be in the studio. And so what was happening is I was feeling like I wasn't myself because again, a dancer is able to walk. And so since I can't walk, am I a dancer? You know, and so that brought up um, identity problems for me and a lot of stress um, and insecurities and just not even feeling like I knew who I was anymore. Um, So I then challenged myself to say, okay, if I were um, just a regular old person who um, tripped and twisted their ankle, you know, maybe they're riding a scooter and they twisted their ankle. um, If that happened to me and I had an office job, would I just feel anything more than inconvenienced by this? Mm -hmm. Would I be so stressed about getting back as soon as possible? Or would I just be like, "Mm, well, this is annoying. And then do my PT exercises, try to take care of myself and then Mm -hmm. just kind of go on. And so what I realized when I kind of tried on that mindset for a second and I took the pressure off of myself and I just said, okay, you are a human being and you have to trust that your body will sort itself out again take the pressure off. I noticed that instantly I had so much less stress 
and it still took work. I had to kind of, it, it takes work to stay in that state of mental surrender to like, I don't know when I'll be back. But just being honest with the fact that you don't know anyway, it's kind of healing. And so um, that plays into my next tip, which is taking as much stress, um, especially mental stress, off your chest, do as much of that as possible. So um, that comes from altering your expectations or letting go of them. Uh, it comes from doing activities that you are uninhibited when you do them. So it makes you feel like you can participate fully, you're normal. Um, spending time outside or with friends, anything you can be really present doing um, or find a hobby that brings you meaning or it makes you feel like you're creating something, uh, doing anything to relieve the stress does have a physiological benefit in your recovery. So I'd say that's really important. Um, yeah, and I could really talk all day on this. And in fact, I do have an mm -hmm. online program for dancers called the Comeback Stronger Course. And um, yeah, you can visit comebackstrongercourse.com and that's where you can learn all about this program that I created, which goes through five different modules that really walks dancers through the biggest and main challenges of the recovery process so they can actually be equipped to come back stronger. So this is kind of like the support that I believe every dancer needs between their doctor's visits. Because I was like, oh man, I'm going to be fine at the beginning of my recovery, but my doctors are going to fix me up. I'm just going to get surgery. It's going to be fine. We're all good. Then I realized like when I wasn't at the doctor's office, I felt lost, alone, confused, didn't know if I was doing things right. I realized my doctors actually also didn't have all the answers. And so I created this program to walk dancers through those gray areas so that they can actually have an efficient and effective recovery. So they can check that out. And there's also a free resource I created, um, five ways that dancers go wrong in recovery and how they can avoid those mistakes. So I'll give that information to you so people can check that out below. But yeah, I'm really passionate, as you can tell, about supporting dancers through injury because it's it's really challenging. I understand. Yeah, it's sort of a big deal. I mean, it, it, when dance is your livelihood or, or even, if it's, even if it's your hobby, not your profession, it's still a really big deal when it's your identity and it's how you yeah. It's how you enjoy yourself and it's how you see yourself. It's really difficult to have that taken away from you for a little while. Um, I think I would add one more thing, which is that when you come back from it, how much, uh, you know, really enjoy the amount of gratitude that you find yes. from returning when you do yes. finally get to do it again. You just feel so grateful that you have this in your life so and you feel so grateful for the world and for your body. And that is a really cool thing that comes out of injury. I think you get Absolutely. perspective that you would never get without that amount of pain. You get perspective for anyone dealing with chronic pain. You get um, a lot more compassion for other human yes. beings when you've gone through it. Empathy totally. is massive. You're, My you're, injury is literally why I'm doing what I'm doing now because it helped me to grow in empathy and recognizing I really do enjoy supporting other people. I totally agree with what you're saying I literally cried in ballet class when I got back into my first class I just I like turned around and faced the corner I was like it's, it's so good and there was like a principal dancer right there she's like are you okay I'm like I'm really okay I'm fine like I'm loving this plie combination it's so, so good I know. I know we laugh but it's so true it's it's yeah it's it's, it's really a feeling like no other when you feel like yourself again or at least close yes. enough to really enjoy what you're doing so totally um, any, anyways, Chris, uh, Kristen, I really appreciate your time today. I had so much fun talking with you. I love that you mm -hmm. emphasize the humanity of the whole process, you know, really being a human, um, giving yourself some slack on your way in this journey, enjoying the process, being present, mm -hmm. not looking for instant gratification. These things are all so hard, not just in the present time, but as people who always want more and always are living busy lives. Um, I, I really appreciate your perspective and I, and I know our dancers Thank will you. as well. Thank you, Julie. I really, I'm so glad that we got to talk and um, thank you for just giving me a platform to babble and share all the things I'm really passionate about. I, I'm just always so grateful to get to connect with other people in the dance community and really to just serve as many dancers as possible, recreational dancers, adult dancers, or professional, doesn't matter. I think we all share the same heart and the same passion and we're all humans at the yeah. bottom of it. So <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, dancers, well, I hope you had a lot of fun as much as we did in this conversation. If you like what you heard, make sure you go check out Kirsten online. All of the information is in the description below. Uh, she has so many great resources, um, both for free and her mindset coaching as well. So be sure to check it out if you love what you heard today. Let us know what else you want to know below. And until next time, take care. Bye, guys.